So welcome back to Boys on Film on YouTube. Raj is here. Hey Phil. Uh, Stranger Things. I'm, I'm going to be controversial. Season Ooh, two. I like a controversy. I, I didn't think I was going to like it. Well, first of all, Something what did you not like about Stranger Things? Uh, Stranger the first Things season. season one. As much as I love Winona Ryder, it was Winona <clears throat> Ryder that really made me irritated by the whole series. Really? I really like the styling. I love all that kind of 80s vibe thing that's going on and the electronic music, the soundtrack is just superb. Because that's right up your alley. Oh, it really right is. Right up my alley too. It really <laughs> is. But sometimes I don't like things too stylized. It's like American Horror Story. I love horror. But for me, American Horror Story is a little too stylized. It's a little too fake. And it's the same with Hannibal to a certain extent. It's too, as much as it's well done and the, the effects are great and there's lots of gore and it is quite authentic, sometimes it just feels a little bit too, too smoothed over. Made I, for I like TV. it rough around the edges. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I have to say, I've watched up to episode six, and I love it now. I've I've totally embraced it. She Winona Ryder still is a little bit cray cray. Yeah, it, it's those mad staring <laughs> eyes, <Yeah>. isn't it? <laughs> Which, in some ways, I think she's perfectly cast now for that role. I can't imagine it without Winona yeah. Ryder now. But I do love her. I mean, I love all the movies that she's been in, Heathers and yeah. you know, all the stuff, and even Beetlejuice when you go yeah. that far back. I think it's interesting too with season two how they brought back Sean Astin as I know. well. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like bringing up some of our favorite actors from yesteryear and then putting them in the current spotlight, which is really fascinating for me. I guess it's a nod things too. to the history, isn't it? Because people that love strange things, you get, um, all sorts of people that are into it for whatever reason, whether yeah. it's the 80s, nostalgia, whether it's the people that are in it, the stars. But you're appealing to the younger market too because it's got that fresh, yeah. contemporary feel. Yeah, well, the suppose. millennials are going, who are those old people? Yeah, there? yeah. <laughs> and, and when we see people like Matthew Modine, we're like, oh, wow, that's cool. Yeah. And they just don't get it yeah. at all. Completely wasted <laughs> over the heads. Um, so what do you make of it? Because you've seen the whole series. Yes, I binge watched it uh, when it came out last weekend. And I have to say, I really like, like, like it in terms of it's a good sequel to the original. It feels like a movie. It does. It's like yeah. a nine-hour movie. More so than the first yeah. series, I think. But what I wasn't expecting, and this might be a little bit controversial too, is a bit heavy on new characters than I was expecting. Because you've got the classic characters like Eleven yeah. and Dustin. And, but yeah, you've got all these new characters like Billy, and which I don't seem to think he had much of a point in season two right because it just kind of ended <laughs> yeah with him flirting with a mom and that was kind of it and then you've got uh eleven's sister who has strange powers yeah. that um we don't quite know about and she seems a little bit evil but yeah i wasn't quite expecting the here's a bunch of new characters when we don't even really know the main characters that well it yet. seems to be more horror this one as well well it seems to be more sci-fi actually because it's obviously a, a mixture of both genres but um, without spoiling it too much, because there are obviously people that haven't seen the whole thing, but there is an element of creature fantasy. Yeah, is quite which is popping horrific. Up, yeah, it's popping up a lot more. Yeah. in films these days too. Remember, oh, yeah, Shape of Water. Yeah, Shape yeah. of Water. I'm not a serial killer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> creature fantasy, sci-fi elements. It's very interesting. An interesting point that my other half Jeremy made about Stranger Things is that sometimes it's hard to connect with child characters. I, I didn't feel that with It. I loved it and obviously there's one of the stars of Stranger Things in It. Is it Finn Wolfhard? Yep. Mike Wheeler? And I loved it and I, I could really relate to the characters because it kind of reminded me of when I was that age. Um, Stranger Things season one I couldn't connect with those characters but I can more so in this season. I think it's because it feels like the director and the writers, because it's the Duffer Brothers isn't it, have created mm -hmm. this. I, I, I feel like they really understand children and are really sympathetic with, with children and don't see them as inferior to adults. I think it feels like, you know, they're quite intelligent. Yeah. And they treat them with respect. And if you watch any of the things. interviews with the with the cast and the young kids, they're they're quite on it. Yeah. They're surprisingly intelligent. Really for smart. Kids their age, yeah. Do you think it's scary? Because, you know, it, it doesn't feel... Because I'm, I'm a hardened horror fan and I know it's not meant to be horror specifically, but is it, is it scary? I think there are certain horrific scenes there's definitely it kind of the same way that it does it jumps out at you and that to me is what classic horror is and what mm. classic horror should do is those make you jump out of your seat moments where you're like oh you know spill your popcorn yeah so it's unexpected yeah when you know today's 
you know, I think it's kind of going out of style a little bit and sort of the classic horror vibes are coming back in. But, you know, the slasher movies where it's just like torture porn and yeah. stuff like that. Not very, pop, not very popular anymore. No. I think people are hearkening, you know, for a bit of like, ooh, I want to be, jump out of my seat sort of scared and then laugh about it because it's, it takes you somewhere that yeah. you're not quite expecting. And I think they want a good story too. Yeah. I think people are over that kind of quick fix, um, just sensationalism stuff. And I think Stranger Things has got, well, I was going to say it has got a good plot. I didn't think so at the beginning of this series. I thought it's not really going in it. It feels a bit ploddy and it's a bit boring. <laughs> Am I allowed to say it? it's a bit boring because I know that people are going to be sending me turds through the post and stuff <laughs> saying that. Um, but I really did think at first two, but then I guess it was making way for the really Yeah, and it's stuff. one of those series that the classic is you just have to stick with it. because Slow then, burner. Yeah. I think a lot of TV series are like that. Mm. These days. They start off with setting the scene. It takes a couple episodes, but there's so many TV shows out that are like that right now. Oh, I think a good example of that is Bloodline. Yeah. Did you see Bloodline? No, it, I haven't. It's so slow, but so brilliant. Yeah. And then Mr. Robot, for me, is kind of the yeah. same way. Like, yeah. You just have to stick with it. You just invest in the characters. It yeah. takes, you, takes you a while to... But get, people are wanting that, and I think it was perfect. Whoever coordinated the whole timing between, you know, Stranger Things, it coming out, then Stranger Things too. Like people just love that sort of genre. Mm. They're really onto something there. Yeah. And I just love about how Stranger Things does this, but it makes '80s music really cool. I again. know. And the third series is expected. I, I think they're wanting to finish it all off with the fifth season, aren't they? So it's going to keep on going for a while. Apparently, according to the Duffer Brothers, they said they want to conclude it with the fifth season. So oh, that's be. interesting because it doesn't feel like it has a conclusion yet. No. Like I feel like I still want to know what happened to Barb. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and that was brought up, wasn't it? I think it was episode Just four. Just barely touched upon. Yeah. yeah. Maybe they'll, because oh, you've seen the whole thing. So yeah. You, you're you're going to be sorely, dis- gonna be sorely disappointed if you're uh, expecting more Barb yeah. in season two. Season three, then maybe. Hopefully, because they need to. That's a so whole season now. About. It's turning yeah. into a bit of Twin Peaks, like, yeah. and she's become a celebrity in her own right. I know. <laughs> so, do you prefer it to the first season? And if you had to rate it, out, out, you know, star rating, what, what would you give it? I'd probably give it a good solid four. Yeah, me too. Yeah, but I then mean, I haven't seen the whole thing. So the only thing that annoys me about season two is that. There's so many new characters I don't quite care about. I want to know more about the other characters. I want, you know, how like in It, how it kind of told the story of all the children and sort of what was their motivation? Was yeah. it an abusive father or was it a fear of clowns or um, was it, you know, a little kid who's got bullied because of his weight? Like, I love those little micro stories. And I don't feel that Stranger Things has done that yet. Even, you know, their most interesting character, which is Eleven, they still haven't really delved into her story that much. They did a little bit this season, uh, but they're really taking their time with it. So if they say that they're going to end by five seasons, they still have a lot of storytelling to do. I think it will happen, but then who knows? It's the same with Twin Peaks. So many questions unanswered, even at the end of the latest series. And I think maybe the Duffer, you know, the Duffer brothers want to have the same mentality as David Lynch and for, you know, for, for a lot of questions to still be in your head and still have that mystery. Make you obsess over it. And make you obsess <laughs> over it, yeah, totally. <laughs> but I'm, I, yeah, I'm going to give it a four star rating, but then I haven't seen the whole thing, so it's unfair to actually kind of criticise it. I don't want to criticise it, but I did think it just took a couple of episodes for me to, to really get into Can it. Can I ask you a question? Do you think that, like, the Eleven character and the stuff that's happening in the Upside Down, yeah. do you think any of that is connected? No. Neither do I. Probably not. I think it's a bit of a red herring. So what are they up to in that weird building of Institute of Science, whatever we'll they're doing there? probably never know. And that's what frustrates me a little bit about it, but then I quite like that, that idea of not everything being answered. It's the same with Twin Peaks. I don't necessarily want everything to be... Do you know what I mean? I don't, I don't want everything answered. I want there still to be... Fan conspiracy a big theories. Question mark. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I've really enjoyed it. But it I do want to know what happened to Barb. But please make a season three where it's <laughs> all about Barb. <laughs> I think it's going to come though. <laughs> but then they'll, they'll probably just hint at it. They won't reveal anything. Oh, don't do that to me. <laughs> it's don't do that to me. <laughs> so we'll be back um, for another video soon. Don't forget we are reviewing not just TV shows but movies too. It's so boys on film. Boys on film. See you on the next video.